Right oh, here we go. Uh, we've got the pack connected. The BMS is off, but it should still throw some voltage through when I turn on the switch. And if memory serves, uh, when I turn it to number two, it should work. Or not. Right, time for the JK startup procedure. Probably the most annoying thing about this BMS is um, not being able to activate it without, um, well, I guess it activated with the charge current, uh, charge voltage. So um, what I need to do is uh, use my power supply here to um, supply Supply uh, the volts across the BMS to make it think it's charging, which hopefully will then result in it going beep and uh, turning on. So we're um, we gonna try that. There we go. That was, that was pretty painless. So she's now on. Beep beep beep. <clears throat> Um, and hopefully now if I check some voltages we should see we should see uh, the pack voltage let's have a look 53 volts for that so there we go we're activated um, still isolated at the bus bar so now it's time to go check the bus bar okay here we are, we've got our negative from our battery here. Uh, I've got lead on the positive bus bar. We are isolated with this switch. Um, so I'm not expecting to see any voltage through here uh, until I turn that switch. And touching here, no voltage. So that's good. Let's uh, flick the switch. So let's flick the switch on to two. That's the terminal I'm using and check our voltage pack voltage 53.36 beautiful so uh, the bus bar is now alive so that's great <clears throat> um, what I'll do now is I'll turn that off and fire up um, I guess um, the servo and uh, might even do the charge controller but anyway we'll fire up the servo and the shunt That'll power that up and uh, we'll uh, be able to look at our screen as well and um, check it all out. Right, so I've got them connected now and we turn this. And I can see some lights on the smart shunt and I can see lights on the servo. And I can see the screen here just flashed so it's powering up as well. So we have success. Right oh, so now we're, um, I'm just connecting the solar charger now to um, the Lynx um, distribution here. And um, yeah, what, what we're going to be doing is basically uh, using a resistor to uh, pre-charge that <coughs> um, to stop um, a lot of inrush current. So live system um, and uh, I guess um, with, with the battery the way it is it can take a lot of um, it can pump out a lot of uh, amps in a very short time and the capacitors that they use in things like the chargers and the inverters um, effectively um, act like a dead short so um, it can either uh, upset your BMS upset the equipment <coughs> uh, because the uh, current that comes out of the batteries uh, or you can blow fuses because uh, the current that comes out of uh, batteries can easily overwhelm. So um, yeah, I'm going to give this a red hot crack uh, at using the pre-charge to, uh, to get this on. Um, so here we go. I know, I didn't film that but it worked uh, very well. Um, I was able to uh, just simply <coughs> hook this around the lead, touch the terminal and you could see the, um, you could see the um, smart controller come alive. Uh, so it's now connected in as well. Uh, if we go back to our menu, yeah, we can see our PV charger here. 
Um, we've got no AC loads, of course. No AC input, of course, yet. Um, so now what should happen is uh, when I actually uh, connect the isolator uh, for the solar array now, we should start to see some charge come in. Once it actually starts charging, <coughs> so we should see that. There we go. Look at that go. And I can see it on my phone as well. So um, we've got the smart solar controller, the smart trunk now, um, the servo, which doesn't really read anything, but between the smart trunk and the uh, charge controller. And of course, once we get the inverter, uh, that should appear there as well. So that'll be neat. Uh, and all this goes up by the servo to the VRM portal. So over on the BMS side, um, we can see the same sort of charge going in. Um, we can see 21 amps coming into the batteries. Uh, the batteries are virtually full. Um, they're going to take a small amount of charge today, but they are um, already at yeah basically 100%. Um, but that's fine. We will um, let it do what it needs to do. Charge it up, give it a bit of a test run, and um, yeah, let it all. Uh, work itself out. So uh, this is the um, heart and soul I guess of the installation. Um, I've chosen to go with a multi plus uh, two 5000 VA uh, unit um, which will uh, obviously give me a lot of power and um, I can always expand down the track if that is a requirement so um, yeah pretty exciting to uh, check this guy out I'll uh, I guess I'll uh, start unboxing him and uh, see how much room he's gonna take uh, I do have the measurements for it but it's always easier to um, to get a bit of a visual once you start um, putting stuff or outlining stuff on a board so yeah let's get him open Handy dandy manuals. That the mounting plate. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> I was expecting um, something a little bit more substantial, but okay. Uh, what else we got in here? A power cable or oh, battery. Looks like a uh, yeah battery temp sense. Quick install guide, which is probably the most useful. Check that out in a minute. <clears throat> nice and genuine, genuine. Uh, Picktron screws, that's pretty good actually, and the full manual. And we got the unit itself, which uh, is bloody heavy. That's like a two man lift. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that out. And that thing is heavy. I might just leave him in there until I've got uh, some help. Well, somehow through some superhuman feat of strength, I managed to uh, get the Molly Plus on the wall. I don't recommend doing it by itself. It uh, it was heavy, very heavy, and 
hopefully the side of the shed won't fall down. Anyway, um, it's up there now, so woohoo! Here we have the uh, yeah the underside of the Victron. Got the battery in, um, and then we've got AC. So we've got AC in, so we can also charge from uh, grid, um, which we might do uh, occasionally. And and uh, probably need to pop some screws in there. And um, we've got AC out, so uh, two AC outs, which will switch between. Uh, utilizing the battery and uh, the grid depending on how it's programmed which is cool and we've got communication ports up here so um, we can monitor all the things which is uh, where you get your geek on so yeah cool I'm sort of keen to yeah get him connected up I guess and um, or at least give it a go so we'll um, see how we travel okay so I've um Made up some uh, battery leads now, uh, sorry, inverter leads. Um, so these are, um, what are they, two gauge, 35 mil. The way these work on the distribution is uh, they simply attach to the um, rails underneath and um, then this little isolator uh, bit of plastic comes down to shield um, the negative and the positive. So a really neat solution for securing cables. Um, and we've got the 200 amp breaker in there protecting the cable as well so um, really neat solution I like it so uh, anyway uh, this is just temporary by no means will this be permanent but um, I just I guess you know I'm excited I want to power things up and be able to have a play with them and, um, before I actually put any load on them so um, I'm literally gonna just wire this up so I can power it on uh, and again I'll be using my little pre-charge resistor to do that um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to build a pre-charge circuit in the battery I think uh, so then when I'm working on stuff I can I can isolate it um, and then um, pre-charge before I turn everything on so anyway um, enough of me rambling let's get this connected resistor <clears throat> I don't know it's always a bit nervy connecting this stuff if you ask me That's charged up now, should be able to connect it. No spark.
we have it. So I'm just checking things out with the um, JK BMS, just seeing how the battery has performed overnight. <clears throat> and here we can see it's currently sitting at 53.14 volts or 97% um, according to the BMS. So the idle current draw is 300 um, milliamps um, and the battery is fairly well balanced. So the active balancing is still occurring and it um, has done a good job to balance those cells down. <clears throat> um, I will now enable the solar and um, which should induce some charging and uh, we'll see what that does. Just taking a look, uh, we're getting 300 watts off the roof at the moment. Um, there's some cloud and shading around. Um, but that's, uh, you can see now we have positive charge going in into the BMS uh, around 6 amps uh, which is great um, and typically what we'll see now are the cells start to get um, a little bit out of balance um, which is natural because the, the cells are almost 100% here at the moment so um, we'll, just, uh, we'll just see what happens over the next couple of minutes. Some light it. 